Um, we are going to queue up our next talk, which is my personal shopper. Uh, one size does not fit all in taste, size, or style. Um, and technology is going to help personalize not just the experience, but the product itself. And we hear a lot about that from certain areas of retail, especially footwear, like Nike's personalized shoes. Um, our speakers today are Heidi Forbes, Asta, with Two Balance U, Thank you guys. Andre Golub for Elf's Corp, Sebastian Goulian, president of Global Beauty at J&J &J Consumer, and Larry Schwartz, CEO of Atrix Worldwide. Welcome. I just want to remind you guys, the mics are a little delicate, so if you just speak in. Super close. Thank you. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. We're going to talk a little bit about the personal shopping experience and how that's really been evolving. And uh, really, it comes down to one size does not fit all. And as I talk about a lot in my work, that the anomaly is the norm. And we really have now digital is giving us the opportunity to actually accommodate for that. And so there's some really exciting things that these guys are all working on in their different um, companies. So uh, instead of hearing more about my introduction, I think we want to go a little bit into some of the amazing things that are happening in their companies. You guys changed location in my order, so I'm just <laughs> going to swap my cards discreetly here. This is Sebastian Guillon from Johnson & Johnson. He is the president and global beauty C GFO at Johnson & Johnson and consumer goods. Is that correct? Absolutely. Or consumer, yes. So I don't know if the slides are in the right order because we changed the order of the, of the presentation. Um, so yes, my name is uh, Seb Guillon. I'm in charge of uh, the beauty department at uh, Johnson & Johnson and my role is really to create all the, the strategy and the innovation of, uh, of our brands. We have about 20 brands globally and one of the key brands that I'm leading is, is Neutrogena. What's interesting is uh, we've been at CES now for three years and, and three years ago when we came in, people were asking us like, what is Neutrogena doing at, at CS? Uh, you're like a skincare company. We know you for your lotions and your, and your creams, but you're not really about tech. And three years ago, we introduced a light therapy acne mask using LED lights in order to treat acne on, on consumers. Actually, last year, um, at CS, we introduced a first uh, personalized skin diagnosis. And I'm... Um, Actually, very happy that uh, six months later, in actually in September, we uh, launched it to market, and this is a device that, that you can use that measures very precisely your level of moisture, your pores, and, and your lines. Um, but at Neutrogena, we're we're very um, close to our consumers, and we wanted to hear their feedback. And while they were extremely excited about uh, the technology, and for the first time, they were really understanding what their skin was like, they were also telling us like they would love to have a personalized solution that would go with it. So I'm very happy this year um, to come with a solution, which is a personalized, a truly personalized skincare solution that goes for every man and every woman who are, who are using the, the Skin360. So I have a video that, um, that is a short uh, explanation of what the product does. So, so this is a personalized sheet mask. So has anybody in the room ever used a sheet mask before? So I don't see many hands. I think it's probably because there are many men in the room and, and not enough women generally have more, more hands raised. But when uh, a sheet mask are basically a, a product that were, I think, created in Korea uh, about uh, 20 years ago. Um, and they are a, a paper mask which are impregnate, impregnated with active ingredients. And you apply it on your face. But what happens is they tend to be 
like very big, uh, it's supposed to be fitting everybody, it actually fits nobody. Uh, it goes into your hair instead of being on your face. The, the, the nose flat actually goes into your mouth. So it, it's actually not that a pleasant experience. So the way we're, we're personalizing the mask is uh, for the first time we're actually uh, doing a 3D uh, selfie of your face and we measure exactly the distance between your eyes, the shape of your nose, the overall shape of your face, and we die cut exactly a face mask which is gonna be 100% tailor-made for you. And the second level of personalization is at an active ingredient. We 3D print um, different actives in different parts of the mask. We've defined six different zones, and therefore you can have a different active for your forehead, for your cheeks, for your nose, um, and, and for your chin. So you can treat at the same time the wrinkles in your eyes, the dry patches you have on your cheek, the oiliness on your forehead, your um, redness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a really, a truly personalized skincare solution that goes with the device, and you can track the progress over time. I love it. This sounds exciting. I'm looking yeah. forward to trying it. Actually, sure. Um, so, um, 3D printing is coming in amazing directions, and uh, Larry Schwartz from his CEO of Atrix, they're doing some really cool stuff as well, which is more uh, around our feet specifically rather than our face. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Larry? Sure. Yeah, a lot of people know us for our orthotics and our sh our footwear, but Atrix has a pretty robust technology development division. We actually we make our own software, we make our own hardware, and I think we're invited here because of our latest scanner, which we call Albert. And, uh, and the foot scanner actually integrates 5,000 pressure sensors, 1,000 IR LEDs and receptors, and 18 cameras. And from that, in about 30 seconds, we can capture really unbel unbelievable data about your feet. We can learn all the different measurements, all your pressure underfoot, and from that, we can help get a consumer in the right products to get them comfortable. So we really attack the technology from two aspects. One is, what are we gonna to do to provide real benefits for consumers? And the other is, how are we gonna help a retailer? So on the consumer side, everything is about getting them comfortable underfoot and then getting them in the right shoe. So um, we just launched a, a whole new way to do custom orthotics with 3D printing. So from this information, we actually can use additive manufacturing to print an orthotic where we can control the pressure relief underfoot every square centimeter. So we actually can build an orthotic for a lot less than what traditional custom orthotics cost where you can get a custom arch to your foot and every aspect of your foot can have pressure relief. So if you put a lot of pressure on your forefoot, it can be softer in that area. And it really is a revolutionary way to do orthotics. So um, we try to make the, the tech really authentic to get people comfortable. And for a retailer, not only does it help provide add-on sales for their business and provide a, a true unique experience in store, which retailers really need desperately today, um, we also help them get, in, get the consumer in the, the right fit the first time. And this can all be integrated into an e-commerce platform. So we're trying to use machine learning in our software package to make it where if a retailer, if they're a mono-branded retailer and we have their email, when they log in online, we can, we can recommend that maybe in this shoe you're a size eight, in this you're an eight and a half, in this one you're a seven and a half, and we're working with the technology to help retailers reduce returns by five to 10%. So for our retail partners, we wanna give them in-store experience, we wanna give them add-on sales, and we want to integrate all this information for their digital marketing platforms and e-commerce to help improve their bottom line. So. I love it. And, and I, I checked this system out yesterday, and you really have to see it to experience it and understand the yeah. incredible potential that it has. It's very exciting. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. And Andrew, not, last but not least, we have Andrew Gulab from Elsa Corp. And he's the CEO co-founder, CTO of Elsa Corp, which is a virtual retail company platform and service provider. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you guys are doing? Yeah, hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here. Greetings from Italy. Uh, yeah, so since we are from Italy, I would say that not only one size doesn't fit and even one style doesn't fit. So that's, that's the real issue. Uh, we work in fashion, Elsa Corp. Elsa for us means exclusive luxury shopping experience. So we started as a shopping experience company, and then we become something completely different. I will show step by step. Uh, what is interesting uh, is that in five years, 
our company, who is a startup, so first of all, it's a startup. In five years, we have seen the reaction from the market from really it will never happen. So the big brands, medium brands, important, not important, were telling us that personalization as a thing by itself will not happen because fashion will not accept it. No? Customers must just buy because brands know how to do it. Designers do great products and people will just buy and be happy. We were pioneers, we were fighting, really fighting at the beginning. And now, just after five years, what we see is that some brands even don't have any more creative director. They say, we have designs and we have customers, and customers know better than, than us that what, what they need. It's totally crazy. So if we have lived this, this, uh, this nice time uh, in five years, um, but after all, we're a technology company. No, we don't produce uh, clothing, shoes, nothing. We, we do technology, uh, 3D is a way to say it's 3D commerce. Maybe today it's easy to understand. No, people can, can, uh, can, can imagine what is a nice 3D. There is a way to visualize th object in 3D which looks really uh, like realistic, you know, like 100% like, 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 like on a photo. Uh, but five years ago, it was quite, quite, quite difficult. May I go ahead, right? Yeah, oh, then I come back. Oh, okay, I'll continue. So let me quickly demonstrate what, what is our experience. Uh, I, I made five, I defined five eras, five periods of uh, relationship between customers and brands, how it was. So in the, the prehistory, what it was surely before us, now the fashion, how it was born, we know it was born as indiv individual and it was born as a service. Now in the beginning, there was no business at all. There, was, there were no sizes, no standard styles. There was uh, couture. No, that's why we like to say, okay, in the beginning, fashion was a couture. It, it was uh, made uh, to, to impress. It was creative. It was something to, to admire. Then, well, what was the first step? Some companies, the pioneers, introduced personalization. The idea to, to, to give a customers the power to personalize their products. It means basically create whatever they want. In the beginning, there was no very clear understanding of what is a mix between style, brand style, and a customer wish, and so on. So there was a bit confusion of confusion, but some companies, and even very famous in, uh, ex examples, they, they just allowed customers create their own products. For some period, it was very cool, but then at the end, you know, fashion is is not only a, a, a tool, a technology, it, it's, it's a creative. So it, at the end, uh, brands were looking for something more, uh, more balanced, no? which takes into account the style of a company. And what was the next step where we already contributed, I would say, uh, in, in an important way, is the, is the way of uh, era of customer experience. So the customer wants to be able to personalize, to define individual touch for their products, but being sure that the product remains of a brand style, that something remains styled. Now, nobody of us is, is, a, is a, a stylist, no? Uh, the name of this panel is personal shopper. I would say in fashion, we, 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 it's more important to call personal stylist. No? If, if somebody could help me, I'm lucky I have a wife who is an expert in fashion, so she's my personal stylist, but most of the people don't have it. So the technology came to help. Uh, and what we have seen in this period is that Technology like augmented reality, virtual reality, and, and so on, works very well if a customer can touch physically a product. So you can take in your hand uh, just a sample, and then with, with, a, with a technology, creative technology, you can see how it would look like. So you can personalize it, and you will be sure that you, it is something that's tangible. Then, this period, now we call this era of mass customization or virtual retail. This is really an end-to-end an -end vision. So finally, brands understood that it has to be balanced. The design, the retail consumer, and the production. No? So in this period, everybody speaks about sustainability, about on-demand models, transparency. Uh, so these values become very important, and you cannot do it only on the retail side. No, it's not about customer who says, I wish something just of a different color. No, if it's not balancing through the whole uh, supply chain, it is difficult. So the companies working there, we also work there, and it's almost possible, I would say, now for brands to introduce the balanced end-to-end -end, uh, vision of uh, uh, complete personalization and thanks to digitalization of supply chain. And finally, I'm close yeah. to, okay. yeah, to our conclusion. Sure uh, 
uh, we started with uh, a couture fashion, and I believe at the end it will be again a couture fashion. I, I love to call it virtual couture fashion, in the sense that it again will come back to be individual, but the technologies, the artificial intelligence and the cool technology all together, the, this is something that will play the role of a personal stylist. We work, and many other companies work in this direction. No, the technology, especially artificial intelligence, can know better than us, which is our preferences and style and fit and everything, but especially it can take into account what the companies, the brands, the designers want to, to bring to the market. Now, what, is a manuf what are manufacturing capabilities, and, and so to put it, this all in a synchronized way. So we believe this, this is the, the, way, the way. This is great, and I love the way that all three of these are really integrating our capability to understand using the knowledge that we have and the big data that we have to actually provide a much better product for the customers and make Absolutely. the shopping experience so much better for the retailers as well. Exactly. I wanted to touch a little bit on sort of the tension that that creates, the personalization, and how that impacts your brand in the process. And I thought that might be a good question for you, uh, you to cover around J&J. Sure, so sometimes I get questions whether personalization means the end of, of brands as we know them today. I actually think that it's the opposite. Uh, Neutrogena is known and trusted by consumers because we always obsess to bring them the best technology, the best solution for their skin. And, and to really challenge the, the status of the industry today to, uh, to always uh, um, bring the, the, the best solution for consumers. And I think that personalization uh, is enabling us, uh, is enabling actually consumers to understand, understand their skin better and to be able to provide the right, the right solution in the different areas of the face. Um, we know that six out of 10 women today are asking for personalization in, in skincare. Um, and when we ask our consumers um, what kind of product they're, they're, they're looking for, they say, I don't really care if nine women out of 10 see a, a real benefit. I want to know if it works for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if it works for me at this exact moment because the skin is, a, is, a, is changing all the time. You don't have the same need when you are in your office or where you're actually at CES and it's very dry and you've taken a plane and you're partying a lot, you need much more moisture than, 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 than usual. Yeah. So by bringing the right solution in real time to consumer and buying extremely personalized, we're building this connection loop with our consumers and this trust, which is extremely important, uh, in the connection between between a consumer and a brand. Absolutely. I'd actually, I, I was before you even said the word. I, I was just thinking the trust that you're building mm -hmm. there because you're really basing it on what their needs are and as they're constantly changing. So I think that's And it's uh, also how really data can be used, not only um, as uh, like company taking the data for consumers, but actually we are giving back that data to her yeah. so she understands her skin with real facts. Nice. And I think that leads in really well to what you guys are doing over at Atrex and, and sort of how you're able to do that with 3D scanning in order to really print and create something that is so unique to the individual customer's needs. Yeah, I mean, and on, on the brand tension, I mean, for us, our brand is all about customization and technology, so um, it's, it's really right down the middle of who we are. And we do look at it even with some of the partners that we work with. So, you know, we have partners like Red Wing and New Balance where we just serve as a technology provider. And, you know, they see it also as a brand enhancement. It's all about providing a better performance. So... You know, in, in the old days, with, when it comes to footwear, you were lucky if somebody measured the length of your foot, but why can't we capture data about the ball of your foot, your girth, your instep height, and use this technology to get a better, a better fit? So, you know, we view what we're doing, even though it's personal, per, personalization and customization, as a way to elevate brands, both ours and, and the, uh, the manufacturing partners that we work with. Yeah, wonderful. And, and I want to make sure that we get a little bit more from you. And what about the impact on retail? How is that whole experience changing in terms of like inventory and showroom? And, uh, you know, can you speak to that a little bit, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, you oh. know, on the 3D printing side, we were talking, it was me or? Oh, no, sorry. actually, it's asking <laughs> Andrew. That's I okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure your, everybody okay, gets a little bad. time yeah. before we run out. No, for, from us, this, this is exactly the, the, this is the, is the, the best conclusion of what, what we have seen. So the retail side, in the beginning, the retail was like, uh, here, here are the products, here the, there is your customer, and just 
the magic you know, to select. But the products are already made. They are already produced. They are overproduced. You know, it's full of inventory. And the customer is already on, only selecting. Now, with help of these technologies, you know, of, a, of a new balancing approach, a uh, customer can not just select from the shelf of, of ready products, but really have something in his hand. Where a device, uh, experience, and a, a game a kind of entertainment, and at the end the product could even be not produced before. No, it can be done on demand, but you customer, you won't care anymore. Very soon, the speed of uh, digital production will be almost real time. So now yeah. today, maybe for a normal factory, if we speak about fashion, producing on demand personalized product, it's still a challenge. You know? Oh, formally, it takes hours, but the factories are never organized to produce on demand one by one piece. No? So at the end, it takes weeks. Yeah. But we are now very close to kind of uh, the, the era of hybrid manufacturing, and it will be possible to produce something in, in just a few days. So at the end, it's almost the same for you, or to buy a ready product, or to order, get it produced just for you and deliver it. Uh, if it's done in industrial scale, it will have the same good cost. So at the end, the retail will not become the retail by itself. It will become an interface into the world of brand. Now you will really order like it was in the beginning of fashion. This is yeah. what we believe so it will be. So now Moore's Law hits fashion. Exactly. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.